One in four children under the age of 18 will have a behavioral health diagnosis. We've seen more and more children come to pediatric emergency departments in mental health crisis. In a high school classroom of 30, two to three kids will report attempting suicide in the past year. The suicidal thoughts are real. Whatever it is we can do to help them through that is, um, is important. Suicide has become the second leading cause of death in children 10 to 14 years old. It's the second leading cause of death and it's 100% preventable. We don't want to make suicide a secret. We don't want to make it something that you shouldn't talk about. We want to normalize the conversation. These kids are talking about it, whether it's exposure to social media, things they're seeing on TV. The reality is these conversations are happening and maybe they don't have the right terminology, maybe they're calling it something different, but kids are talking about how they're feeling and what does it mean to feel helpless and hopeless. We really need to create a society where we openly talk about mental health, that we talk to young children about their social emotional well-being and let them know that there are people in their lives who care and ask them questions about how they feel. In an effort to identify patients at risk for suicide, Connecticut Children's has developed a universal screening program using ASQ, Ask Suicide Questions. So when a patient enters the ED, if they are 10 years or older, during their triage process, and usually in their room where there's privacy, they are asked the ask screening questionnaire. The triage nurse will ask four questions. In the past few weeks, have you wished that you were dead? In the past few weeks, have you felt like you or your family would be better off if you were dead? In the past week, have you been having thoughts about killing yourself? Have you ever tried to kill yourself? If the patient answers yes to any of these questions, then they will be asked the fifth question. Are you having thoughts of killing yourself right now? If the child screens positive, their provider will perform a secondary screen and risk assessment. If there is a positive screener and we have some concerns about a child's safety and well-being, they are referred to our social work team and our behavioral health unit, which we refer to as Zone C. So we work to assess the families, create disposition plans where we talk about how to provide them the services that they need, either in going home or to their next layer of supportive treatment. And our low-risk kids typically go home. And if you have some risk, we give you resources uh, and basically point the families in the right direction to get the help that their child needs. We also have a novel concept called our Transitions Clinic. By creating the Transitions Clinic, we are offering families the opportunity to go home, leave our emergency department, go home to their own families, and then come back as soon as often the next day and be seen by a multidisciplinary team, psychiatry, social work, and care coordination. One of the greatest benefits of this suicide screening program is normalizing the conversation because we are talking to all kids over the age of 10. So if you come in and you screen negative, that has a positive impact on that child. Talking about suicide is not gonna cause it or contribute to the risk. And in fact, it's likely to be protective and relieving for the child to know that they can talk about this now. It provides people who have suicidal thoughts with hope. I try to tell patients especially when help comes to them, don't ever give that up because it's very important that you accept help. I get a lot of parents that have that sense of relief. They're like, oh, I'm glad this is happening. This is so helpful because it lets me know like we don't really talk about it at home. When we look at the results and the amount of 10-year-olds that came in for medical complaints and ended up having uh, underlining behavioral health issues or suicide risk, uh, it makes me feel really good that we're, we're saving lives. We want to empower parents to continue to have this conversation long after you've left Connecticut Children's. We want families to feel comfortable talking about behavioral health and understanding how they can support their kids. And when they don't know where to go and how to ask for help, we want to be there to support them in continuing those conversations. Every two hours, a young person dies by suicide and these deaths are preventable. We just need to take action collectively.
If there was any other disease process we knew was completely preventable, then all we had to do is ask screening questions. Every emergency department, every hospital, all healthcare providers would be doing it, and we should be.